Hi, Merry Christmas. I'm Sergio Mesa, and this is Easy ENG for you. Is the English for you. Did you know that verbs in English have five different forms? Bet you didn't know that. Okay, stay tuned and learn this lesson with us today. And in today's video, we're going to learn verb forms in English. There are five different forms, but this lesson has two different parts. In the first part, we're going to study verb forms, and in the second part, we're going to study verb combination, okay? So, let's begin with verb forms in English. The first verb form that I know for sure that you already know is what we call the infinitive, okay? How do we identify a verb that is in the infinitive? Simple, because we're going to see the particle to before the verb. For example, to go, to be, to clean, to work, and to think. We know those verbs are in the infinitive because they are with the particle to, okay? The second form we're going to study is the base form or the BF, that's not your boyfriend and it's not your best friend either, okay? <laughs> okay, how do we identify a verb that is in the base form? Well, in the infinitive, we had the particle too. In the base form, no particle whatsoever, okay? Meaning, if you take away the particle and you leave the verb, guess what? You have a verb in the base form. In other words, to go, infinitive, go, base form. To be, be. To clean, clean. To work, work, and to think, think. That's the base form, okay? And let's go with the third verb form, the past tense, that you are going to use in the simple past in English, okay? The past tense of the verb go in English will be went. The past tense of the verb be was where. And the reasons we have to is because was is for the singular and where is for the plural, okay? The past tense of the verb clean, cleaned. And remember, if you want to learn the pronunciation of the ed ending for the past tense in regular verbs, there's a video that you can find here on is the ENG for you, okay? And for work, worked. This is another regular verb. And here is when we see the difference in verbs in English, because based on the uh, conjugation, we're going to have irregular and regular verbs, okay? Now, let's continue with the next form. In the next form, we have the past participle. The past participle, we're going to use it with the present perfect and also the past perfect in English, okay? Now, you're going to see a huge difference in regards to irregular verbs. In regards to regular verbs, you won't see any difference, but let's take a look at the difference for regular verbs. In the past tense, the verb went, past tense was went, now in the past participle we say gone. Wow, that's a huge difference. Was where? Was the past tense of the verb be? What happens now? Been. Think, I had it before, thought. What happens to cleaned and worked? They stay the same. And that's why they are called regular verbs, because the same form for the past tense is the same one for the past participle. They don't change. Okay? When you see the changes, it's because you are in front of a regular, irregular verb. Okay, the last of the verb forms we're going to see, we call it present participle. But I bet that you didn't know that his underworld name is the gerund, okay? When are we going to use the gerund? We're going to use the gerund in English in what we call the continuous forms. For example, present, uh, present continuous, past continuous, future continuous, present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous, and the like, okay? 
Now, when I say gerund, immediately to your mind it comes the ing, correct? Okay, so the gerund form of the verb go will be going, for to be, been, clean, cleaning, work, working, think, thinking. Remember, we're going to use these with continuous forms in English. I want you to remember something really important today. Non-progressive verbs, okay? And the reason I say here at the beginning, most verbs have, have these forms. It means there will be exceptions. Why? Because some verbs are not continuous, okay? We call those verbs non-progressive verbs. The list is kind of long, but you can find other verbs on the internet, okay? I'm just going to give you examples today. Verbs such as hate, love, like, prefer, have, feel, see, smell, etc. Okay? Those verbs, please don't use those verbs in continuous forms. Now you can say, for example, oh, but I've heard people before saying, I'm having a blast. Okay, you can say that because we can use have in the gerund or in the continuous form when it refers to an idiomatic expression, okay? But when the meaning is about belongings, you can use it. For example, you can say in English, I'm having two apartments in Cartagena because it's grammatically incorrect, okay? So you must be wondering, why do I need to know about verb forms in English? Very simple, because in the next part of the video, we're going to focus on something that is called verb combination. And we're going to see that some verbs in English will be followed by infinitives, base forms, and gerunds. Okay? That's in a while. Okay. In this second part of the video, I put it together because most students get confused when they have two consecutive verbs in one sentence. Usually, they don't know um, the verb form the second verb has to take. Okay? And this has to do with verb combination and verb forms. Okay? So the second part is about verb combination. Why? Because English is very tricky. And some verbs in English will be followed by another verb in the infinitive, in the base form, or in the gerund. Okay? In this part of the video, I brought the list of verbs that are followed by infinitive, verbs that are followed by base form, and those verbs that are followed by gerunds, okay? Let's study, for example, which ones will be followed by another verb in the infinitive. This is the list. Agree, expect, manage, pretend, threaten, attempt, fail, need, promise, try, claim, hesitate, offer, refuse, want, decide, hope, plan, seem, would like, tend, learn, and prepare. Let's take a look at the examples or how this is in practice. It looks like this. Martin agreed to help me with this project. You see, the verb agree is always followed by another verb in the infinitive. Don't forget this part. Another example, I decided to give presents to my subscribers. So stay tuned because in December we're going to be giving prizes for all subscribers to the Easy ENG for You channel. Okay? So don't forget. Let's take a look now to which verbs are followed by base forms. If you look at these verbs, tell me, what do you see? There is a pattern. What's the pattern you see? Can, could, may, might, will, would, should, must, ought to, shall. What do you see? Model verbs, don't you? Okay, yes. Model verbs will be followed by base forms, but not all of them, okay? There are exceptions, like for example, have to and need to. They are exceptions to this rule, okay? These verbs will be followed by base form. Examples, Mary can speak two languages. And this is why you are finding out why you can't say in English, Mary can to speak, because it's grammatically incorrect, okay? You are using the verb form that is not the correct one in the case of the verb can. I should rest, I'm tired, that is another example, okay? So this is very simple. And you must be wondering, okay, how can I learn this? 
memory. Okay, you have to memorize the list. Okay, and if this list is not enough, you can find more verbs online. Now, let's finish with which verbs are followed by gerund. Avoid, denied, finish, regret, dislike, imagine, risk, be used to. Stop, suggest, consider, don't mind, feel like, can stand, and get used to. Okay? And I have one more example right here. I avoid eating burgers. And this is not true about me because I love burgers. Okay? And I can say, for example, I feel like eating a burger right now because, yes, I'm kind of hungry right now. Okay, as you can see, verb forms and verb combination, they can be together, okay, in English, and they help us determine the form a consecutive verb takes, okay, when we are writing in English, especially when we're writing, because we tend to make this mistake when we're writing in English. I hope that you have learned a lot in this video, and don't forget to continue, uh, follow us on, on uh, our social networks, and also here on Easy ENG for you, because in December we're going to give we're going to be giving away prizes for each one of you guys. Okay, thank you very much, and see you on the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>